I love the question. How much boost do your turbos make? How much boost do your tunes make? Like, not how much power, how well do they drive, or, you know, get my truck tune, all the other things that go around that, but how much boost? As if boost is some perfect equivalent for power. Because when you're watching that boost gauge wrap around the needle, you can feel the torque push you in the seat. So there's a corollary there, right? And there's a corollary for as the needle moves, you feel it, but it runs out. As the boost gauge continues to wrap, the power doesn't continue to build. In fact, as the boost gauge continues to wrap, how hard that engine is working does continue to build, how hard it is on parts and how much fuel it's consuming, and all these other inefficiencies grow, and the truck is feeling it and it's hating it, and you're asking me, how much of that can you get? Wrong question. How much good air can I get? How much good power can I get? That's what you should be asking. I'm Nick on this Diesel Insights, why more boost doesn't equal more power. As a performance enthusiast, you're looking for more power. You're looking for more torque. You're looking for that feeling that pushes you into the seat. The only way to get that is with more fuel and more air. More fuel, that's easy. That just costs money. More air, that takes some talent. That takes a turbocharger that works. A turbocharger's job is to take atmospheric air and compress it into your engine. When it does that, it increases boost and it increases heat. And normally those things come up together when the turbocharger is working well. When the turbocharger is not working well, heat comes up faster than boost. And when that happens, the turbocharger goes into its inefficiency range, it's hard on the engine, it's hard on the truck, it's hard on the turbocharger. That's when boost is not good. What we're looking for is good air density. What did Gail tell us? We want good air, right? That means our temperatures come up with boost. That means our compressors are efficient, we're working in the efficient range of the engine. So after you go through this whole process, you buy an awesome turbocharger, you make the right decision, you get something that's working efficiently with your engine, in your drivability range, in your power range, it's easy to kind of wrap it up and call it good at that point. What I want to do is coach you on not doing that. Keeping your eyes open, keeping your vigil, you know, be vigilant. Boost leaks, exhaust leaks, mechanical issues, they can easily kill performance without you knowing it. You'll still see that 35, 36 pounds of boost or whatever you're looking for, maybe 50 pounds of boost. And on a twin application, we see even higher than that. On trucks with boost leaks, we still see those numbers, but the compressors are spinning so much faster to get there and the heat is building in the system, and it's beating up on the truck, you're losing the performance number, you're losing it on the dyno, you're just not seeing the number, and the drivability suffers. So, you know, you made all, all the right decisions, you just didn't test the system and make sure it had good integrity. We wanna help you avoid that, we wanna make sure that you're, that you're keeping yourself aware of those, uh, those opportunities for failure, and that you understand this is a performance application, it needs you to maintain it. So, stay on the ball, keep the truck running healthy, Make the good call on buying the right turbochargers for your application. I'm Nick, Diesel Insights. Talk to you next time. If you like these videos and you want to learn more, check out the Diesel Tuners blog, dieseltunersblog.com.